Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how to compile and install firmware on your Artillery 3D printer equipped with the Ruby mainboard. At the time of making this video, that would include the Sidewinder X2, Genius Pro, and Hornet. This tutorial will not show how to make any changes to the firmware, just how to compile and install it. So we will be using the factory firmware that is provided for download on the Artillery website, which I have linked in the video description. First, there are a few programs you will need to install on your computer. VS Code, Pronterface, and STM32 Cube Programmer. I have added links below where you can download them for free. Go ahead and install them now. I'll wait. Now that you have those programs installed, you need to download the firmware for your application. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using my Sidewinder X2, so I would have selected the Sidewinder X2 firmware source. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm going to continue. Start by opening VS Code. Once it's open, go down to the little gear icon on the bottom left of the screen. Click on it, then click on Extensions. The list will come up here on the left. On the search bar, type in Platform. And the first one that comes up should be Platform IO IDE. Go ahead and click on that, and you'll install this plugin. I've already got it installed, so I'm going to continue. Close that, and go back to the Explorer on the top left then click on Open Folder. Navigate to where you have downloaded the firmware. In my case, that is on the desktop. Go ahead and click on the folder that contains all the files that you've downloaded. And then click Add. It will populate the list on the left with all the folders and files contained within that firmware. Platform.io will automatically load and add the necessary files it needs in order to compile the new firmware. Give it a couple minutes and it should finish. When Platform IO is finished with what it needs to do, it's time to compile the firmware. Like I said, I'm not gonna be making any edits. I'm just gonna compile and flash the stock firmware. On the bottom here, you'll see this little check mark for Platform IO build. Go ahead and click on it. This begins the process of compiling the firmware itself. How long this takes depends on the speed of your computer, but generally it takes about 30 seconds to a minute. When completed, it'll say success and how long it took. You can go ahead and close VS Code now. Now it's time to hook up your computer to the 3D printer using the provided USB cable. The power from the PC will power up the mainboard in the computer, but as extra redundancy, I do like to have power on coming from the wall. From here, we could open up Pronterface. It should automatically know what port to connect to, but sometimes it gets confused if you have other things hooked up to USB ports, like a mouse or external hard drive and whatnot. On the top left of the screen, it will show you the port number and the baud rate. For the Sidewinder X2, the baud rate is 11,500, and it's automatically selected COM port 6. If you click on the dropdown, you'll see other COM ports that are available. Start with the one that's defaulted. If that doesn't work, you could pick a different one and try again until it connects properly. Go ahead and click on connect. You'll see on the window here that the printer is now online, so it's connected properly. Go ahead and go down to the terminal and type M997 and hit enter. This puts the main board in DFU mode, which simply put means that the main board is ready to accept a new firmware. Minimize Pronterface and open up your STM32 Cube Programmer. As a side note, when you install the Cube Programmer, it will automatically install the necessary drivers you need for the USB connection to the mainboard. On the first screen, make sure USB selected in the top down, then click Connect. On the bottom, you'll see Data Read Successfully. That means it's connected to the mainboard. On the left, click on the second button down with the little arrow pointing down. For your file path, click on Browse. Open the folder that contains your new firmware. Find the folder labeled PIO. Open that, then build, then artillery ruby, and then look for firmware.hex. Then click open, then click start program. This process takes about another 30 seconds as it pushes the new firmware onto the main board. And then when it's done, you'll see download verified successfully and file download complete. 
Go ahead and disconnect that. Close it. Disconnect and close your printer face. Disconnect the USB from your printer and power it off. Now you've successfully installed firmware on your Artillery 3D printer that's equipped with the Ruby mainboard. And that is all. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you want to learn more about editing firmware, stay tuned as I am working on a video showing how to switch the factory touch probe with an inductive end stop, including how to edit the firmware to work with it. So be sure to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you don't miss it. And as always, thanks for watching and happy 3D printing.